Well, I thought I'd take a little step back and give you sort of a perspective into sort of what motivates Generation Y. And the best way to really do that is compare Gen Y to Gen X. Because sometimes when you're marketing to Gen Y as Gen Xers or boomers, we bring in sort of the baggage of who we are into marketing to them. And they are very different generations. Trends are obviously cyclical. And certain things are the same about being a teenager, about getting your first date or going into high school. But obviously times are changing. Gaming is changing. The internet changes things. But there, so there are big differences in who those generations are. So I have about four and a half minutes to tell you who Gen X is and who Gen Y is and try and sum that all up. So I'm going to do it very quickly. So let's see if I can do that and sort of give you a good perspective. But I can't, so let's move this guy forward. Thank you. So I just want to see who here falls into sort of the uh, what we're qualifying as Gen X. And by the way, we do it a little differently. Some people, yeah, by a show of hands. Okay, so we've got a lot of Xers here. And by the way, who falls into boomers? Boomers are aged about 47 to 67. 67. Okay, so a couple of boomers. And by the way, now when we're talking about generations, we tend to qualify it by less than 20 years because we think that 20 years is too many years. If you define a generation by the factors that affect them as they grow up, then someone who's two at the time a generation is coined is very different than someone who's uh, 18 at the time a generation is coined. Um, generation X is a small generation. That's part of why the media tended to ignore them. It's also because they're a very confusing generation. So for those of you who are Xers, um, there are a lot of misnomers about us. I'm an Xer, by the way. So what are some of those misnomers and what are the things that sort of defined us? And by the way, this is not a competition. It's not as if one generation is better or worse than the others. Well, we were the slackers. We were the generation that, you know, we're the bad guys. Okay, I said it's not a competition, but it's a little bit of a competition. And we lost, by the way. Um, but so, uh, but to sort of say that, you know, and I like to use this picture because it's sort of before Kurt Cobain was sort of the sort of drugged out, but sort of just a little bit confused. So what made us who we were before we get to Generation Y? Well, we were the first generation that had um, the first high level of divorce. One in two marriages that ended in divorce, one in two where both parents were working um, outside of the home. So by the time Generation Y came along, this was sort of just a foregone conclusion that it would happen. For us, it was the first time that the world was sort of collapsing. Don't sit in the sun, you'll get cancer. There's a hole in the ozone layer, don't, uh, there's lead in the water. Basically, the world's collapsing and, you know, Sorry, not a lot we can do about it. Um, on top of that, lots of death all around us. And again, I get it for the boomers. The boomers like, stop whining, you youngin. Um, we had problems too. Yes, they did. But we had you know, gangs killing each other for pairs of sneakers. We didn't have a man landing on the moon. We had the Challenger blowing up. And of course, we had AIDS. And so, you know, we were supposed to be the product of the, you know, free love generation. And instead, we have you have sex, it'll kill you. So we had a lot of mixed messages growing up. On top of that, in the 80s, greed was good. You could make a million dollars overnight. You should make a million dollars overnight. And in the 90s, the recession hit. Not only could you not make a million dollars, you shouldn't want to. Money doesn't buy you happiness. And of course, if you think about it, the boomers were also a big generation. They didn't want to step out of the spotlight. As I said, they're still young. They're still vibrant. They were still sending fashion trends and music trends. They don't want to get out of the big jobs. So it's very hard as a young generation to step into the spotlight when the previous generation doesn't want to step out. And quite frankly, you have parents who act as young as you do, dress as young as you do, and quite frankly, date people as young as you do. So what did this mean for Generation X? How did we turn out? What became of us? Well, if you think about it, and I'll go to the next slide, if you sum us up, we went through our midlife crisis about 20 years too early. So rather at 45 saying, why did I wind up as a market researcher? At 25, we said, you know what? I'm not going to make the same mistakes as my parents. I'm going to figure it out now. And that's where the slacker misnomer came from. It wasn't that we didn't want to work hard. It was that we didn't want to make the wrong choices. So we would go to law school, and we would drop out. We would join the Peace Corps, and we would drop out. We'd get a job at McDonald's, and we would drop out. And so we'd go back, and we'd live at home until we would figure it out. The outcome of all of this is that in our 30s, we're coming out of this crisis very focused on our family. And that's why you see a lot of working moms who, who decided to stay home, highly educated women who said, no, I'm going to focus on being a parent. As a marketer, you should always focus on Gen X as a very singular group. They are focused on their family. They're focused on their small unit. They are not focused on the group as opposed to Gen Y, who cares very much about the group. They are not activists. They don't have time. They care about their small unit. That's really Generation Y. 
Um, they're very savvy and skeptical. They're the ones who don't believe you because all along, growing up, they couldn't trust anyone. No one really sort of told them the truth. Um, they're nostalgic because in the past, they think things were better. Um, my favorite uh, example is the rise of martinis and cosmopolitans. And don't mean to make light of it, but it's as if they said, God, you know, in the 50s, 60s, friends were together, family were together. I mean, I know they're alcoholics, but at least they were together. Um, of course, the contradiction is we want new technology. We want to have that. And as I said, they're very focused on their world, and they're looking for new meanings of happiness and success. And if you can provide that, they will thank you for it. OK, then there's Generation Y. Let's look at them. So look at them. Bigger generation, happier generation. Think about Tavi. She knows it. She's got it. I did not behave that way at that young age. I could never have stood on this stage. Um, and there are more of them. Who here falls into Generation Y? OK. Yep, see, they even outnumber us here. <laughs> um, OK, now, first of all, whatever I say about you, thank goodness for this generation. If we had kept going the way of Generation X, we would have been in big trouble. But there are lots of things about them, a lot of misnomers about them. You think about them, you think of the princesses, the entitled, the parents, Hiltons. Well, by the way, where did this come from? Well, let's think about that. Um, they looked at us, and they saw us going through this midlife crisis, and they said, oop, not going to do that. I'm going to figure it out now. Well, now is 14, 15, 16. No way. They can't figure it out. They have so much stress in their life. And you know what? It's real stress. They have friends who are on drugs. They know they're not going to get into school. There are a lot of them. They have friends who are in rehab. And you know what? Nobody takes them seriously. Companies can. Companies can help relieve their stress. They have too much going on. You need to take it ser seriously. Um, on the upside, they were wanted. They're the most over-fertilized, over-conceived generation. They were had later in life. By the moment they were born, their parents put those baby on board signs and were very, very pleased they arrived. Let's talk about the entitled and empowered. On the good side, you know, this is the generation that they were praised. They were told they were great. Oh, you went to the potty. Here's a gold star. My son is nine. He has 17 trophies. What did he do to deserve 17 trophies? Nothing. He showed up. Good job. OK? Not actually so good. Because what happens is, is by the time they get into the workforce, and again, present company excluded, they go, I made a copy. I've been here for three weeks in a row. Let's talk about my promotion. I'm here for three years in a row. Let's talk about my promotion. It's not their fault. It's our fault. Well. It's, all, you know, it's society's fault. We've overpraised. We've overpromoted. Buy one, get one free. Here's an alternate ending. Come in, we'll give you something wonderful. And now, as marketers, we're going, why do they want so much from us? It's not their fault. The good news is, is they're not overexpectant. They just want a dialogue. They want you to involve them in the process. They want you to talk to them. It doesn't have to be big things. Just include them. Um, they are, as I said, powered by the group. It's always been about the team. It's always been about sort of lots of people. So m more marketers should take advantage of that. Talk to them about sort of bringing in the group. They are the most multicultural generation in history. If they see a lily-white group of people, they say, that is not my group. You can't talk to me. I don't recognize that. I could talk to you for hours about um, being online. Lots of other people have, so I'm not even going to spend time on that. I just have a few minutes to talk about sort of what that means. So yes, they are entitled. But as I said, we've made that, met, that bed. We are going to have to lie in it. The great news is, is that they are optimistic. They are so hopeful. Um, but they're just as realistic as Generation Y, uh, excuse me, Generation X. So the good news is, is that you can sort of talk to them about the reality of things, but you're going to have to talk to them in a positive way. They are going to make real change happen because they sort of recognize that things are going to and need to be different. As I said, they're, they're powered by the group. So talk to them about that. The heroes are the ones who are going to be not perfect because perfect stresses them out. They don't think that people can or should be perfect. And they will forgive people and brands if they've made mistakes. The question is, times are tough. There may be gloom on the horizon. After a couple of years, they've seen that it's getting a little bit tricky. And will they be re resilient? We don't know. 
We hope they will be. I hope they will be. And I think that brands have an opportunity to help them through these difficult, difficult times. The last thing I want to say to you about them is, is that this is such a great time to be marketing to this generation. They are a good and hopeful group of people, and you have a huge opportunity with them that you probably didn't with Generation X. So thank you so much.